Hello everybody. Welcome to our YouTube channel SRIP Edu Pharma. Today's video is on bioengineering techniques used for the skin efficacy studies. In this video, we will be discussing various skin parameters which are evaluated using non-invasive techniques like sebometer, mexameter, cutometer, corneometer, tivameter, etc. So if you have not subscribed our YouTube channel, do subscribe SRIP Edu Pharma. So initially we will discuss what are bioengineering techniques or what are these non-invasive techniques. So these techniques are basically the bioengineering techniques uh, that are used for determining the various skin parameters. They are known as non-invasive techniques because they do not invade or they, we don't insert anything inside the body just by the topical application or topically we uh, find out the skin parameters. And these techniques are very much fruitful for cosmetic evaluations, then for comparative studies, then for determining various type of diseases for the treatment of diseases. Then in efficacy studies of cosmetics, they are of very much importance, especially for determining the water content, the composition of the epidermis and the barrier functions of the epidermis. Then it facilitates the quantitative evaluation of moisturizers, fairness creams, sun protection creams, anti-aging products and scrubbers. Why we say quantitative evaluation? Because in this actual quantity is determined that how much quantity if you are applying, then what is the change in the skin parameters that you can observe. So the important bioengineering techniques used for the skin efficacy studies are, first is skin hydration. Skin hydration is determined by corneometer. Here we have written uh, this trade name because these are the instruments which are basically uh, made by Kareez and Kanaka company, which is a German company, and it specially deals with these instruments. So for skin hydration, there is corneometer, CM825, then for sebum determination, that is for lipid content, there is sebometer, for melanin and erythma, erythma means hemoglobin, skin hemoglobin, or redness of the skin. This is determined by mexameter, then skin viscoelasticity, viscoelasticity is determined by cutometer. Then transepidermal water loss, which is called as TEWL, it is determined by tevameter. Then pH measurement on skin and scalp is done by skin pH meter. Then for assessing skin temperature and microcirculation, there is skin thermometer. Then for skin and hair color, skin colorimeter is used. So in this video, we will be discussing in short the basic principles and I'll be showing you the various diagrams related to these instruments. And in further video, one by one, we will be discussing in detail the principle and working. So uh, when we see in short the principles, then for skin hydration, the instrument used is corneometer. And the basic principle is that it is based on capacitance measurement of a dielectric medium. So any change in the dielectric constant due to skin surface hydration, variation alters the capacitance of a precision measuring capacitor. In this basically, the change in capacitance is measured. So if there is very minute change also due to the increase in water content, then this instrument measures it. Then comes sebum determination. This is uh, determined with the help of instrument sebometer. In this, what we do is sebum means lipid. Whenever there is the quantity of lipid, then what happens is there is uh, if we use any butter paper, then you can see there is spot on the paper. So spot test is generally done for lipid determination. So in this, what we do is there is a tape, special tape is there. And when that tape comes in contact with the sebum, then it becomes transparent. So the light transmission represents the sebum content on the surface of the measuring area. And it is displayed in units from 0 to 350 photometry. 
So spot photometry is the basic principle for sebum determination. Next comes melanin and erythema, uh, that is hemoglobin determination. So melanin, we know that it is a pigment of the skin. So this is measured by the help of instrument named as mixameter. And the basic principle is that it is based on absorption and reflection. In this, the probe emits three specific light wavelengths. A receiver measures the light reflected by the skin and the melanin is measured by specific wavelengths chosen to correspond to different absorption rates by the pigments. And in this, the values are in between 0 to 999. This is the, this is the uh, values that you can see in the results. Then for skin viscoelasticity, instrument's name is cutometer and the principle behind is suction method. Suction means it sucks the skin so that the viscoelasticity, viscoelasticity could be observed. In this, the negative pressure is created in the device and the skin is drawn into the aperture of the probe. The resistance of the skin to be sucked up by the negative pressure shows the firmness and its ability to return into its original position shows the elasticity and they are displaced as curves at the end of each measurement. Next is transepidermal water loss and skin barrier function. The instrument used is Teva meter and the measuring principle is open chamber principle. In this, the probe measures the density gradient of the water evaporation from the skin directly by the two pairs of sensors. And these are temperature and relative humidity sensors. They are present inside the hollow cylinder so this is known as open chamber measurement. The next is skin and hair color. It is determined by skin colorimeter. It measures the values of skin as well as hair. And the values are expressed as coordinates in the color space. LAB or it is also called as RGB. That is red, blue, green. That is red, green, blue colors. The probe sends out white LED light which is arranged circularly to uniformly illuminate the skin. Then the emitted light is scattered in all the directions. Some parts travel through the layers and some is scattered out of the skin. The light reflected from the skin is measured in the probe and expressed accordingly and thereby the skin and higher color is determined. So this is the instrument. This is the logo of the company, which is Kareez and Kazaka company. And... Uh, you can see here, uh, this is cutometer, which has various probes attached to it. And along with this instrument, there is computer screen attached, monitor is attached in which uh, we can observe various uh, details of the software that is included. And when we want to use any probe, like if you are uh, using cutometer, then you have to uh, take in the software cutometer. If you are taking sibometer, you have to take in this sibometer. Likewise, you can select the probes. So you can see here, skin hydration is measured by corneometer. This is the instrument corneometer, CM825. This is the probe. This is the dish, uh, disc here, which measures the conduction. So the capacitance measurement of the dielectric medium is the basic principle. And you can see that by using this probe, you can measure the skin hydration of all the areas of your skin like forehead, then this is palm, then lips, cheek, chin, any area you can measure the skin hydration. This is the typical corneometer curve that is observed when we take the readings. These are the corneometer values. Values are uh, taken in arbitrary units. And in the at the end, the average value is obtained. This is the typical graph that is ob obtained from the instrument. And similarly, this is the typical curve that is obtained. So curve and graph both are uh, both are obtained from the instrument. And also we get an Excel sheet in which all the readings are also uh, obtained. Initially, we take the uh, plain skin readings that is without applying any formulation. And then after applying the formulation, we take the readings. This is cutometer which measures skin viscoelasticity. 
This is single one. This is dual type. Here you can see that skin viscoelasticity of any body part could be observed. Then here there is light source. The negative air pressure is applied because of which this epidermis, this sucks inside and thereby you can observe the elasticity and firmness of the skin. So this is the typical cutometer curve that is obtained by the instrument. Uh, this we have shown that if four measurements are taken, then similar four curves will be obtained from the instrument. And in the similar way, you can get the readings also in Excel sheet. This is melanin and erythma determination by mexameter. This is the instrument mexameter MX18. This is the probe. And here you can see the diagram in which there is a photo detector. Then here light is emitted and different wavelengths are given according to that the melanin and erythma level is obtained. This is the typical graph and curve of mexameter. Here you can see if you take seven readings, then eight is the average reading. In single uh, application, you can get the values of melanin and erythma together. So this is the graph that we get. And similarly, this is the curve that we get from this instrument. Then for sebum determination, this is the cassette. Uh, as there were probes, similarly for sebometer, there is a cassette. And here you can see there is in this cassette, there is a transparent tape. So for each measurement, you have to uh, get the uh, fresh tape. Because once if the tape is used, the next time you cannot use the tape. So you have to uh, bring the clear reel in, in front where you have to apply. So this is the instrument. You can uh, measure uh, the sebum level not only for skin, but also for scalp. Here you can see it is measured. Then for forehead, cheek, chin, all the areas you can measure the sebum level. Then this is the typical graph obtained from sebometer. This is the sebum value. Here you can see uh, these are the three readings and fourth one is the average value. And next comes TEWL that is transepidermal water loss. Uh, this is the instrument, Teva meter TM300. This is the open chamber principle in this way the instrument is present and you can measure the skin barrier functions or transepidermal water loss. This is skin and hair color determination by skin colorimeter. So in RGB values, you get the readings in this white light is given and thereby the skin and hair color is determined. So here we come to the end of our video. Thanks for watching. This was the part one of the video. In part two, we will be bringing separately in detail the principal advantages, disadvantages, technical spe specifications and details of the various instruments that we have discussed here. So thank you so much. If you have not subscribed our channel, do subscribe the channel SRIP Edu Pharma. So keep watching, stay connected.